Hi there folks, welcome back to another video where I continue on the saga of constructing this waterfall wildlife pond. So I think an intelligent question would be, why would you put so much time and energy, literally months and months, into creating this wildlife pond? And it really comes down to this. I've had a dream since I was really, really young of having a wildlife pond and just being able to watch all the birds that came to it. And I know just how powerful a magnet, a pond and water can be to creatures, especially birds, in a desert environment. And I just wanted to be honest with you folks and show you some of the trials and uh, struggles that I went through during the construction process. Today, I'm going to repair the pond liner, my pond. Some poor old mouse fell down in there and uh, <clears throat> I put sheets over the top of this because there's no water in there yet to keep rodents and reptiles out of there. But a couple mice fell down in there. I think one cannibalized the others because I found only just half a body. And then I did find a hole, which I'll show you, unfortunately, right through the pond liner. So that's got to be repaired. So unfortunately, it looks like I thought I only had one hole. Looks like I got another one here. So I figure if I make these rounded, they'll just stay on better. Kind of making like a bicycle tire patch. So hopefully my repair will work well. Once you get the pond filled with water, you sure don't want any problems with the pond liner at that point. So I'm going to use this, it's called flex glue because it works underwater. So hopefully it'll work okay. And so I'm going to put my patches in place and uh, uh, there's hopefully that I can do all this before the rainstorm comes. So hopefully in a couple of days, I should be able to uh, continue with this project once the glue is dried. So what we're doing here, folks, is I took and made a sketch from measurements on the waterfall pond rapid area. So this skirt is designed as a waterproof, or I should say leak-proof section that joins the upper section to the lower. And I'm just using some scrap pieces of pond liner I had. So when I looked at the pond and said, this is a good time to do this, there had been no rain and no water in the pond. But the timing was interesting. Sure enough, it rained. So that meant I had to hop into the pond and there was muddy, dirty water I just didn't want in the pond. So what I did, rather than having to dip out the water and just pour it over the edge of the pond, or even worse, climb in and out of the pond with bucket after bucket of water, I developed a MacGyver draining system where I used an old dish pan and connected an extra long schedule 40 piece of pipe I had and a little bit of mopping and using a rag by hand and all the water is totally gone. So I ordered it a while ago. Great timing, UPS delivered, rock on a roll. Which, if you've watched the videos before, you would see I had used it on the lower part, as in the waterfall pool itself, because it looks like granite and I really love the looks of it. So I thought, why not order some more and put it on the upper part, the cascade or rapids part of the falls. So my goal was to fit the rock on a roll in here nicely, so it helps to make it look all natural. And you weren't just looking at black pond liner. And with these things, it's mostly art and partly construction for doing this successfully. Once I had it in place, I could cut it more to size.
So the next step was to create a removable spillway. And following that, it was time to take all the rock on a roll from the main pond and put it all back in place. And with these things, it's always a little tricky. Next on the agenda, taking the hose that connects to the water pump and feeding it behind the rock on a roll through the hole I've created so then it can discreetly connect to the pump. And then of course all of these frayed edges of the pond liner around the very rim of the pond had to be trimmed. There, it looks pretty good. So, as in any construction project where artwork or sculpture is involved, you do your best to place the rocks the way they should look best. So what we did is we left this piece of star foam uh, sheeting in here so that any reptiles or mice could crawl out. So as you can see, I did leave a little overlap with the pond liner. The reason being, again, if the water pressure pulls that pond liner tighter and tighter, I need to have a little bit of leeway with some overlap of pond liner. So now I can take and uh, trim the rock on a roll a little bit and now set in place that spillway I created. It goes in a little bit hard, but it actually fits. Next, I'll cement in some of the more decorative rocks that are in the rapid section. Now it's back into the pond where I can use an X-Acto knife just to trim up some of the rock on a roll that's poking out around the edges of the stones and just make it a little more neat. And I use a combination of the X-Acto knife, what I call my social distancing haircut scissors. Fortunately, rock on a roll cuts pretty easy. Uh, Think like tar paper or a heavy type of art paper. So next, put in the pump and all the plumbing that goes to that, which really just consists of attaching the hose to the pump. And here I've created a sock from the rock and roll, and that just disguises the hose. Well, folks, the water guy was here, and after months of waiting, and could hardly wait to see this happen. My pond has water, but I can't believe this. I just love this pond. I've still got work to do. I'll have to uh, cement up uh, some of the edge area to cover the pond liner pieces. I love it. Well, as excited as I was about my new pond, and yes, some birds were coming. I'll show you that later. Um, I had a couple lessons to learn.
and they were big ones. The very first thing was nothing but loose dry dirt surrounding the pond. I had no idea that this area would be so windy for weeks on end, and I mean weeks, actually months this year. And what ended up happening is it wasn't very long before lots of drifting dirt started to end up in the pond, making it uglier and uglier looking every day. And I thought, you know, it's kind of dirty around the edge of the pond. The mop's been rinsed, so let's take and give it a little bit of a mop up around the edge. Oh, big mistake. Dawn dishwashing liquid bubbles in the pond for months. I tried scooping them out. I tried taking t-shirts and on the surface of the pond and absorbing the bubbles. Nothing worked. So even though I was discouraged, I got to thinking. It's time for a water delivery. Spend several months. I'm getting low on water and they always bring 1,600 gallons. My tank only holds 12, and the pond holds almost 400. So, time to roll up your sleeves, Don. Time to stop grumbling and complaining to yourself and snarling under your breath whenever you see soap bubbles and mud, and go, a little bit of hard work, you can clean this thing up. Definitely some interesting insect life here on the bottom. One of those beautiful little blue butterflies. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Got to get rid of some of this mud and get ready for the new water tomorrow. So, does anyone remember Mr. Rogers from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? And Mr. Rogers always changed out his shoes. So that's what I have to do, is change out my shoes too. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Please won't you be my neighbor. Retire, they said. You can sit in your rocking chair and just enjoy yourself. Take a nap. Hmm. Not sure that's what's working at the moment. Easy bees, don't get angry. You might be Africanized. Jumbo! Jumbo-san! Missouri-sana! We will, we will, rock you, rock you. All right, time for more water. Enough craziness. You're supposed to be serious, Don. You're supposed to be a serious, dignified 66-year-old. So these small, beautiful little blue butterflies are really glad I cleaned the pond and poured some muddy water at the base of my plant here. Good morning, folks. So I'm hoping today will be a water day and we'll have Kerfman water supply coming here and filling up um, my drinking water tank, which is 1,200 gallons, and the pond. So I'll just show you what I got done. Lots of cleaning, lots of muddy work, but I think it looks pretty good. So I've got the pump back in place there. And that runs, of course, up into the tubing, which runs all the way back up into the waterfall. So what I want to do now is purge the plumbing that runs up through 
the rock waterfall and try to get any soap residue out of that. So in order to do that though, I'm going to have to wait till the sun comes up enough to work the solar panel. New soapy bubbles, which is annoying. There, I hope that helps some. And I think I'll take a towel and just a little t-shirt and clean up any of that water in there in case it's in case the water is soapy in any way. Okay, so I'm going to have to go <laughs> scuba diving and fix that stray piece of rock on a roll, but I can do that. And that's got that, eh, Rod? So we got our water delivery. Alrighty, we've got drinking water and the waterfall pond is full. So I'm all crossing my fingers and hoping that it works again. So I'm going to plug her in. Let's give it a go and see what happens. So when Kerfman water suppliers came and Rod filled up my pond, he noticed something. He said, Don, the water level is already dropping in your pond. And honestly, my heart sank. Just really, really discouraged. Months of work and now I've run into some other problem that I don't even know what it is. I had thoroughly fixed the holes where the mice had chewed, and I know because there was standing water in there for weeks from the rain afterwards, and no sign of any seepage at all. When I was working in the pond, I only used slippers or sock feet. I was super careful. I have no idea what really happened. But I do know that obviously there's a leak and I've got to deal with it. So you might want to watch the finish of this saga coming up in the next video and just see how all this turned out.